Hey guys, and welcome to another episode. Today in this video, I'm gonna show you how to replace a ball joint on your cart. Now, if you didn't check out in the last video how to determine if you need a new ball joint or not, you can click on the annotation right here and it'll bring you right to it. But in the meantime, let's get right into it and I'm gonna show you how to replace one. So we're first gonna go ahead and remove the nut right here that's holding the axle down. And I'm gonna be using a 12.30 millimeter impact socket to take it off. Now, if you don't have an impact gun, you can use a breaker bar. But because I have an impact gun, I'm just gonna use this because it's gonna take two seconds to remove it. With the center bolt removed, if you come underneath the hub, you're gonna see three bolts right there that need to be removed. Those bolts right there are securing the ball joint up to the lower control arm. So once you remove each one of those, the entire top part is gonna be able to come and swing out forward. Next up, we need to remove the cotter pin right here for the tie rod end. And this is gonna allow us to get the arm and completely swing it out. So there's a little cotter pin at the bottom that needs to be pulled out, like that. And then you're gonna grab a 17 millimeter socket to remove this castle nut found on the bottom. Then grab a ball peen hammer and hit the side of the knuckle right here and it's gonna vibrate the tie rod end out. Like that. And it'll come right out. So with that now removed, we can pull on the braking system right here and the entire arm should come out. Like that. And if I can get the camera down here, you can see that, see how it's completely disconnected? Now it's just a matter of removing that nut found on top of the ball joint and then we can replace the old one. With the axle and the ball joint now removed from the car, you can now see that there's a cotter pin and a nut that are securing the ball joint in place. So just like the tie rod end, there's a cotter pin found on the top of the bolt that needs to be straightened out and removed so that we can remove the nut found on the top of the ball joint. So with the set of pliers, just straighten it out and then remove the entire setup. So with the cotter pin now removed, we have to use a 19 millimeter socket and a ratchet to remove the castle nut from the ball joint. With the castle nut now removed, you can now put on a ball joint separator or you can use a pickle fork, either or is gonna work, but I'm just gonna be using this one. It's gonna slide on top of here, and you're gonna be tightening down this little 19 millimeter push pin thing, and it's gonna be putting pressure on the threads right here. Now that is gonna cause the ball joint to just slide right down. So once there's pressure, you can grab a 19 millimeter socket or ratcheting wrench, and turn this until the ball joint comes out. And just like that, this will pop right out. So on the left right here, I have the old ball joint and on the right, I have the new one. Now you can see that it comes with new hardware right here. However, there's two differences between the ball joints. Now the first one is very obvious. So if we were to turn both of the ball joints over, you can see that one of them has a grease fitting, which means that we can put more grease in there should it ever go low. The new one does not. The other difference is that the old ball joint it used a cotter pin and a castle nut to secure it down. The new one is slightly different. Instead, it has a nut like this that secures on top and you use an Allen wrench to secure the ball joint from spinning. So once you have the ball joint like that and secured, it's now up to the nylon part up top. So we need to attach our ratcheting wrench on the end of here and we're gonna have to put an Allen key through the center of it to hold the ball joint from spinning. So hold it in place and tighten this down until the ball joint doesn't move anymore. So with it like that, it's not gonna be going anywhere. So remove the Allen key, remove your wrench. And now it's just a matter of putting the three bolts, one, two, three, back in the bottom through here. So we're gonna have to turn this tire assembly back into place and we're gonna have to feed the axle through the backside. So if you swing it out, you'll be able to guide the axle back into place through the hub. And then while you're guiding that through, if you can, you want to line up the bottom side of the ball joint in place so it lines up with the three holes right here on the bottom of the control arm. So just to pull the axle through, if you can, grab a hand on the back side Push it forward and grab your nut right here, that the 12.30 millimeter nut, and just thread it on so that the axle isn't gonna go anywhere. 
So that is gonna be able to pull the act, that's gonna pull the whole hub and everything back into place, and we're gonna be able to secure those three bolts on the bottom. So we need to align that little silver piece on top of the control arm so that we can get our bolts and feed them through those little nuts. So with all three of the bolts now hand tight, you can then go ahead and grab a ratchet and tighten them up for good. I'll have the torque specs for each one of these bolts down in the description box so if you're following this procedure, you'll know how tight to tighten up each one of these bolts. Last but not least, we need to install our tie rod end back into the back side of the knuckle. So you just line it up, slide it in there, and then grab your castle nut and then re-thread it back on. And once you have it tightened on there properly, you're gonna need a new cotter pin and you're gonna have to thread it inside there to secure it down. Now that's just gonna make sure that the steering isn't gonna get messed up and it's not gonna unscrew itself when you're driving. So once it's installed properly, it should look like this. So you'll have a cotter pin feeding through the bottom side of the castle nut. When you guys are installing the axle through the hub, make sure that you get rid of the old bolt right here and make sure that you install a new one because these bolts are only meant for one time use. So once you put them on, you torque them properly, the threads inside there are gonna stretch and as soon as you take it off and reuse it, if you were to torque it again for the second time, you're not gonna get a proper torque spec. It's not gonna be gripping on and pulling the axle onto the hub properly. They're gonna cost you a couple bucks at the dealer, so splurge, spend a couple extra bucks and go down there and get it done right. Once the new ball joint is installed on the car, once you go ahead and try and wiggle the top and bottom of the wheel, there's no play. So that is exactly what we want, and that means that our ball joint was the problem. Now before you put the car back down on the ground, make sure that you torque up each one of the lug nuts and the axle nut to make sure that it's all tightened up properly. I'll have the torque specs for each one of these in the description box below so you can check it out and use it if you have to. So once you have it all tightened up properly, get your jack, get the car, put it back down on the ground, and you're gonna be good to go. If you guys have any questions regarding the install or any questions in this video for that matter, throw them down in the comment section below and I'd be happy to help. Again guys, thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace. What'd you want? His money is back pocket. Mine? Yep. Oh, Mine. sweet. No, give it. How much do I have? How much do I have? <laughs> oh, yeah, dollar. <laughs> <laughs> Loaded. <laughs> Actually, though, why? Why did you go with these bulbs, though? Because they're whiter. No, these are bluer. No, they're whiter because they're halogen. It makes it white. Oh, I was ready to catch that. Yeah, because you're already Okay, so what are those? Are those the. the those are the low beams? Yeah. The low beams. What? Uh, okay, whatever. If these we'll are see. good, then I'll get them for the high beams. Why? Are they the same bolt? Oh, yeah, they're both H1s. Hmm. Those are the weirdest looking H1s I've ever seen. These are the only looking H1s you've ever seen. You're an H1. You you have H6s in your car. No, I don't. H3s? Wrong. H4. Nice try. H4. Wrong. Again. What do you have? 7 and 11. Oh, you have 7s? Yeah. I have H7s. Nice ones, if you want them. Okay, so I have lots. I've got a drawer full of bulbs. I no, mine aren't bulbs. Liv, you want them? Yeah, I do. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Mine aren't bulbs. What, what you got? Mine are 7,000 lumen projectors. Oh my gosh. Oh my. And he's going to get it. Okay, well, yeah, it's very simple to change the headlights. All you're doing is taking the old headlight out, like the bulb. And if you can see, that's the little connector on the inside. If the camera will focus. Again. So, it's right there. The light is a male and the connector is a female. Let's see. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I know it is. Okay, I'll play around with it. Oh, will you now? Yeah, oh, okay. I'm stealing them. <laughs>